The Corpus Hermeticum Poem Andres, The Shepherd of Man Notes on the text, this is the most famous of the Hermetic documents, a revelation account describing a vision of the creation of the universe and the nature and fate of humanity. Authors from the Renaissance onward have been struck by the way in which its creation myth seems partly inspired by Genesis, partly reacting against it. The fall has here become the descent of the primal man through the spheres of the planets to the world of nature, a descent caused not by disobedience but by love, and done with the blessing of God. The seven rulers of fate discussed in sections 9, 14, and 25 are the archons of the seven planets, which also appear in Plato's Timaeus and in a number of the ancient writings usually lumped together as Gnostic. Their role here is an oddly ambivalent one, powers of harmony who are nonetheless the sources of humanity's tendencies to evil. One it chanced once on a time my mind was meditating on the things that are, my thought was raised to a great height, the senses of my body being held back, just as men who are weighed down with sleep after a fill of food, or from fatigue of body. Meth ought a being more than vast, in size beyond all bounds, called out my name and saith, what wouldst thou hear and see, and what hast thou in mind to learn and know? Two and I do say, Who art thou? He saith, I am man shepherd, poem Andres, mind of all masterhood, I know what thou desirest and I am with thee everywhere. Three and I reply, I long to learn the things that are, and comprehend their nature, and know God. This is, I said, what I desire to hear. He answered back to me, Hold in thy mind all thou wouldst know, and I will teach thee. For even with these words his aspect changed, and straightway, in the twinkling of an eye, all things were open to me, and I see a vision limitless, all things turned into light, sweet, joyous light. And I became transported as I gazed. But in a little while darkness came settling down on part of it, awesome and gloomy, coiling in sinuous folds, so that meth ought it like unto a snake. And then the darkness changed into some sort of a moist nature, tossed about beyond all power of words, belching out smoke as from a fire, and groaning forth a wailing sound that beggars all description. And after that an outcry inarticulate came forth from it, as though it were a voice of fire. Five thereon out of the light, a holy word, Logos, descended on that nature. And upwards to the height from the moist nature leaped forth pure fire, light was it, swift and active too. The air, too, being light, followed after the fire, from out of the earth and water rising up to fire so that it seemed to hang there from but earth and water stayed so mingled with each other, that earth from water no one could discern. Yet were they moved to hear by reason of the spirit word, Logos, pervading them. Six then saith to me man shepherd, didst understand this vision what it means? Nay, that shall I know, said I. That light, he said, Am I, thy God, mind, prior to moist nature which appeared from darkness, the light word, Logos, that appeared from mind is Son of God. 
What then? Say I. Know that what sees in thee and hears is the Lord's word, Logos, but mind is Father God. Not separate are they the one from other, just in their union rather is it life consists. Thanks be to thee, I said. So, understand the light he answered, and make friends with it. 7 And speaking thus he gazed for long into my eyes, so that I trembled at the look of him. But when he raised his head, I see in mind the light, but now in powers no man could number, and cosmos grown beyond all bounds, and that the fire was compassed round about by a most mighty power, and now subdued had come unto a stand. And when I saw these things I understood by reason of man shepherd's word, Logos. 8 But as I was in great astonishment, he saith to me again, Thou didst behold in mind the archetypal form whose being is before beginning without end. Thus spake to me man shepherd. And I say, Whence then have nature's elements their being? To this he answer gives, from will of God. Nature received the word, Logos, and gazing upon the cosmos beautiful did copy it, making herself into a cosmos, by means of her own elements and by the births of souls. 9 And God the mind, being male and female both, as light and life subsisting, brought forth another mind to give things form, who, God as he was of fire and spirit, formed seven rulers who enclose the cosmos that the sense perceives. Men call their ruling fate. Ten straightway from out the downward elements God's reason, Logos, leaped up to nature's pure formation, and was at one with the formative mind, for it was coessential with it. And nature's downward elements were thus left reasonless, so as to be pure matter. 11 Then the formative mind, at one with reason, he who surrounds the spheres and spins them with his whirl, set turning his formations, and let them turn from a beginning boundless unto an endless end. For that the circulation of these spheres begins where it doth end, as mind doth will. And from the downward elements nature brought forth lives reasonless, for he did not extend the reason, logos, to them. The air brought forth things winged, the water things that swim, and earth and water one from another parted, as mind willed. And from her bosom earth produced what lives she had, four-footed things and reptiles, beasts wild and tame. Twelve but all father mind, being life and light, did bring forth man co-equal to himself, with whom he fell in love, as being his own child, for he was beautiful beyond compare, the image of his sire. In very truth, God fell in love with his own form, and on him did bestow all of his own formations. 13 And when he gazed upon what the informer had created in the Father, man too wished to inform, and so assent was given him by the Father changing his state to the formative sphere, in that he was to have his whole authority, he gazed upon his brother's creatures. They fell in love with him, and gave him each a share of his own ordering. And after that he had well learned their essence and had become a sharer in their nature, he had a mind to break right through the boundary of their spheres, and to subdue the might of that which pressed upon the fire. 
14 So he who hath the whole authority over all the mortals in the cosmos and over its lives irrational, bent his face downwards through the harmony, breaking right through its strength, and showed to downward nature God's fair form. And when she saw that form of beauty which can never satiate, and him who now possessed within himself each single energy of all seven rulers as well as God's own form, she smiled with love, for it was as though she had seen the image of man's fairest form upon her water, his shadow on her earth. He in turn beholding the form like to himself, existing in her, in her water, loved it and willed to live in it, and with the will came act, and so he vivified the form devoid of reason. And nature took the object of her love and wound herself completely around him, and they were intermingled, for they were lovers. 15 And this is why beyond all creatures on the earth man is twofold, mortal because of body, but because of the essential man immortal. Though deathless and possessed of sway over all, yet doth he suffer as a mortal doth, subject to fate. Thus though above the harmony, within the harmony he hath become a slave. Though male female, as from a father male female, and though he is sleepless from a sleepless sire, yet is he overcome by sleep. 16 Thereon I say, Teach on, O mind of me, for I myself as well am amorous of the word, Logos. The shepherd said, This is the mystery kept hidden till this day. Nature embraced by man brought forth a wonder, oh so wonderful. For as he had the nature of the concord of the seven, who, as I said to thee, were made of fire and spirit, nature delayed not, but immediately brought forth seven men, in correspondence with the natures of the seven, male female and moving in the air. Thereon I said, O shepherd, for now I am filled with great desire and long to hear, do not run off. The shepherd said, Keep silence, for not as yet have I unrolled for thee the first discourse, Logoi. Lo. I am still, I said. Seventeen in such wise then, as I have said, the generation of these seven came to pass. Earth was as woman, her water filled with longing, ripeness she took from fire, spirit from ether. Nature thus brought forth frames to suit the form of man. And man from light and life changed into soul and mind, from life to soul, from light to mind. And thus continued all the sense world's parts until the period of their end and new beginnings. 18 Now listen to the rest of the discourse, Logos, which thou dost long to hear. The period being ended, the bond that bound them all was loosened by God's will. For all the animals being male-female, at the same time with man were loosed apart, some became partly male, some in like fashion partly female. And straightway God spake by his holy word, Logos. Increase yet in increasing, and multiply in multitude, yet creatures, and creations all, and man that hath mind in him, let him learn to know that he himself is deathless, and that the cause of death is love, though love is all. 19 When he said this, his forethought did by means of fate and harmony affect their couplings and their generations founded. 
and so all things were multiplied according to their kind. And he who thus hath learned to know himself, hath reached that good which doth transcend abundance, but he who through a love that leads astray, expends his love upon his body, he stays in darkness wandering, and suffering through his senses things of death. 20 What is the so great fault, said I, the ignorant commit, that they should be deprived of deathlessness? Thou seemest, he said, O thou, not to have given heed to what thou heardest. Did I not bid thee think? Yet do I think, and I remember, and therefore give thee thanks. If thou didst think thereon, said he, tell me, why do they merit death who are in death? It is because the gloomy darkness is the root and base of the material frame, from it came the moist nature, from this the body in the sense world was composed, and from this body death doth the water drain. 21 Right was thy thought, O thou. But how doth he who knows himself, go unto him, as God's word, Logos, hath declared? And I reply, the father of the universals doth consist of light and life, from him man was born. Thou sayest well, thus speaking. Light and life is father God, and from him man was born. If then thou learnest that thou art thyself of life and light, and that thou happenest to be out of them, thou shalt return again to life. Thus did man shepherd speak. But tell me further, mind of me, I cried, how shall I come to life again, for God doth say, the man who hath mind in him, let him learn to know that he himself is deathless. Twenty-two Have not all men then mind? Thou sayest well, O thou, thus speaking. I, mind, myself am present with holy men and good, the pure, and merciful, men who live piously. To such my presence doth become an aid, and straightway they gain gnosis of all things, and win the Father's love by their pure lives, and give him thanks, invoking on him blessings, and chanting hymns, intent on him with ardent love. And ere they give up the body unto its proper death, they turn them with disgust from its sensations, from knowledge of what things they operate. Nay, it is I, the mind, that will not let the operations which befall the body, work to their natural end. For being doorkeeper I will close up all the entrances, and cut the mental actions off which base and evil energies induce. 23 But to the mindless ones, the wicked and depraved, the envious and covetous, and those who mirrored do and love impiety, I am far off, yielding my place to the avenging daimon, who sharpening the fire, tormentateth him and addeth fire to fire upon him, and rush it upon him through his senses, thus rendering him readier for transgressions of the law, so that he meets with greater torment, nor doth he ever cease to have desire for appetites inordinate, insatiately striving in the dark. 24 Well hast thou taught me all, as I desired, O mind. And now, pray, tell me further of the nature of the way above as now it is for me. To this man shepherd said, when the material body is to be dissolved, first thou surrenderest the body by itself unto the work of change, 
and thus the form thou hadst doth vanish, and thou surrenderest thy way of life, void of its energy, unto the daimon. The body's senses next pass back into their sources, becoming separate, and resurrect as energies. And passion and desire withdraw unto that nature which is void of reason. 25 And thus it is that man doth speed his way thereafter upwards through the harmony. To the first zone he gives the energy of growth and waning, unto the second zone, device of evils now de-energized, unto the third, the guile of the desires de-energized, unto the fourth, his domineering arrogance, also de-energized, unto the fifth, unholy daring, and the rashness of audacity, de-energized, unto the sixth, striving for wealth by evil means, deprived of its aggrandizement, and to the seventh zone, ensnaring falsehood, de-energized. 26 And then, with all the energizings of the harmony stripped from him, clothed in his proper power, he cometh to that nature which belongs unto the eighth, and there with those that are hymneth the Father. They who are there welcome his coming there with joy, and he, made like to them that sojourn there, doth further hear the powers who are above the nature that belongs unto the eighth, singing their songs of praise to God in language of their own. And then they, in a band, go to the father home, of their own selves they make surrender of themselves to powers, and thus becoming powers they are in God. This the good end for those who have gained Gnosis, to be made one with God. Why shouldst thou then delay? Must it not be, since thou hast all received, that thou shoots to the worthy point the way, in order that through thee the race of mortal kind may by thy God be saved? 27 This when he had said, Man Shepherd mingled with the powers. But I, with thanks and bells sings unto the Father of the universal powers, was freed, full of the power he had poured into me, and full of what he had taught me of the nature of the all and of the loftiest vision. And I began to preach unto men the beauty of devotion and of gnosis. O oh, ye people, earth-born folk, yet who have given yourselves to drunkenness and sleep and ignorance of God, be sober now, cease from your surfeit, cease to be glamoured by irrational sleep, 28 And when they heard, they came with one accord. Whereon I say, Yet earth-born folk, why have ye given yourselves up to death, while yet ye have the power of sharing deathlessness? Repent, O oh ye, who walk with error arm in arm and make of ignorance the sharer of your board, get ye out from the light of darkness, and take your part in deathlessness, forsake destruction. 29 And some of them with jests upon their lips departed from me, abandoning themselves unto the way of death, others entreated to be taught, casting themselves before my feet. But I made them arise, and I became a leader of the race towards home, teaching the words, Logoi, how and in what way they shall be saved. I sowed in them the words, Logoi, of wisdom, of deathless water were they given to drink. And when even was come and all sun's beams began to set, I bade them all give thanks to God. And when they had brought to an end the giving of their thanks, each man returned to his own resting place. 
30 but I recorded in my heart man shepherd's benefaction, and with my every hope fulfilled more than rejoiced. For body sleep became the soul's awakening, and closing of the eyes, true vision, pregnant with good my silence, and the utterance of my word, logos, begetting of good things. All this befell me from my mind, that is man shepherd, word, logos, of all masterhood, by whom being God inspired I came unto the plane of truth. Wherefore with all my soul and strength thanksgiving give I unto Father God. 31 Holy art thou, O God, the Universal's Father. Holy art thou, O God, whose will perfects itself by means of its own powers. Holy art thou, O God, who willeth to be known and art known by thine own. Holy art thou who didst by word, logos, make to consist the things that are. Holy art thou, of whom all nature hath been made an image. Holy art thou, whose form nature hath never made. Holy art thou, more powerful than all power. Holy art thou, transcending all preeminence. Holy thou art, thou better than all praise. Accept my reason's offerings pure, from soul and heart for I stretched up to thee, O thou unutterable, unspeakable, whose name naught but the silence can express. 32 Give ear to me who pray that I may never of Gnosis fail, Gnosis which is our common being's nature, and fill me with thy power, and with this grace of thine, that I may give the light to those in ignorance of the race, my brethren, and thy sons. For this cause I believe, and I bear witness, I go to life and light. Blessed art thou, O Father. Thy man would holy be as thou art holy, even as thou gave him thy full authority to be.